welcome to episode 4 of Drug Talk. I'm your host, Garrett Campbell. Today, we're going to be talking about a medication called atorvastatin. The man behind atorvastatin's name is Bruce Roth. He was hired by Warner Lambert in 1982 as a chemist. It was in that year that he derived an experimental compound which would later go on to be known as atorvastatin. When he first discovered it, however, it was called CI-981. In 1996, Warner Lambert entered in a co-marketing agreement with Pfizer. They began marketing Lipitor, the brand name for atorvastatin, and funny enough, in the year 2000, Pfizer acquired Warner Lambert for $90 billion dollars. For a little while, Lipitor was actually the number one selling drug in all of USA. Over the course of about 14 years, they sold $125 billion dollars worth. It seems like a pretty interesting medication, so let's talk about it. Let's talk about drugs. As always, remember that this channel is for information purposes only, and you're not to use the information that I provide to you to make your own personal healthcare decisions. So, atorvastatin is one of many medications in a group known as the statins. This group is used to lower cholesterol. All the different generic companies seem to make a version of atorvastatin, and as we mentioned, the brand name was Lipitor. Now, although it's usually used to lower cholesterol, as we mentioned, sometimes, even if people don't have high cholesterol, they still may require atorvastatin. That's because this medication has a lot of data to support its use in primary and secondary prevention of cardiovascular and other events, whether that be coronary heart disease, stroke or transient ischemic attacks, or peripheral arterial disease. In primary prevention, your physician would decide your dose based on your LDL, or low-density lipoprotein, levels. This can also be referred to as bad cholesterol. After starting the therapy, you may find yourself changing up your dose every two to four weeks based on your physician's recommendation. In secondary prevention, it's usually dosed a little more aggressively. If you fit into this category, there's a good chance your physician may start you on 80 milligrams. If you can't tolerate this dose, they'll probably cut it in half and move you down to 40 milligrams. This is assuming that your age is less than 75. If a patient is over the age of 75, they may get away with using 10 or 20 milligrams or no statin at all. The dose of 10 to 20 milligrams can reduce cholesterol, that is LDL cholesterol, by about 30 to 50%. High intensity therapy, which would be doses from 40 to 80 milligrams taken once a day, can actually cause a reduction of 50% in the cholesterol readings. An off-label use for atorvastatin would be a non-cardioembolic stroke or TIA. In terms of dosage forms, there's really not much to say about atorvastatin. It only comes as a tablet. There are four strengths, 10, 20, 40, and 80 milligrams. If your physician was considering prescribing this medication to you, there are a couple things they have to consider before they actually write the prescription. Luckily, unlike some of the other medications we've discussed, there's no dose adjustment needed if you have kidney impairment. However, if somebody was on dialysis, they wouldn't be able to use atorvastatin, although it hasn't been studied, because it has high protein binding, which would prevent it from being cleared from the dialysis machine. Atorvastatin is actually contraindicated, meaning not to be used, in individuals with active liver disease. If someone's serum transaminases were elevated, and we didn't know what the cause was, they wouldn't be using atorvastatin either. Due to the risk of what's called rhabdomyolysis, which is a myopathy, your physician and pharmacist would ensure that you're not using certain medications as they may increase the risk of developing rhabdomyolysis. Examples would be medications that were strong inhibitors of CYP3A4, such as clarithromycin, an antibiotic, itraconazole, an antifungal, or protease inhibitors. In addition, if you had hypothyroidism that wasn't completely under control, your physician may wait until it is under control to prescribe atorvastatin. If you are currently using medications that were often used to treat myopathies, your physician may be a little more cautious as well. An example of one of these medications would be colchicine. So you've sat down with your physician, you've had a good conversation, and now you're ready to start taking atorvastatin. For the most part, atorvastatin is taken once a day. It's a good idea to pick the most convenient time for you to take the medication in terms of remembering to take it so that you can dose yourself consistently. 
as it's shown to be the most effective when taken this way. Some healthcare professionals theorize that it may be better to take atorvastatin at nighttime before bed because you actually create cholesterol as you sleep. And it's not important whether you take it with or without a meal. If you look on the manufacturer's label, they recommend not to crush or chew the tablet, although there's no safety data saying that this would be an issue. While you're taking this medication, you may experience some side effects. Some of the most common side effects are diarrhea, which happens at about a 7 to 14% rate, joint pain, which can happen anywhere from 9 to 12% of the time, and interestingly enough, 13% of individuals actually experience nasopharyngitis. Some side effects that happen at a less than 10% rate are nausea, stomach upset, and a increase in a blood sugar reading. Some people may also experience more urinary tract infections while they're taking this medication. The main serious side effect I always tell my patients to watch out for would be described as muscle pain. We mentioned the medical word for this earlier as rhabdomyolysis. If you were experiencing severe pain, you would want to stop using the medication as soon as possible and seek medical attention. If you're experiencing mild to moderate symptoms, you don't have to rush to the emergency room, but still set up an appointment with your physician. They'll want to make sure that you're not experiencing any other medical conditions that may result in similar symptoms. They may check you out for hypothyroidism, reduced renal or hepatic function, vitamin D deficiency, or a vast array of rheumatological disorders. Usually they can determine this by doing a simple blood test. Aside from muscle pain, if you notice that your urine had a dark color to it, or your skin had sort of a yellow tinge, you may be experiencing what's known as jaundice, which is a sign that your liver may be damaged. Lastly, an individual with diabetes should ensure to have their A1C checked regularly. If, after using this medication regularly for a defined amount of time by your physician, they may decide to add a second agent that acts differently than a statin. It's also very important to realize that there are other things you can do besides using medication to reduce your cholesterol. Exercise and diet are the main two things you can do. If you're struggling in these areas, it may be worth reaching out to a professional in those areas, such as a dietitian, a nutritionist, a physical or personal trainer, or anybody else that you think can give you that push you need to make a lifestyle change. Also, try to remember not to get frustrated with your treatment in trying to lower your cholesterol. Sometimes it can take the use or trial of different medications at different doses in different combinations to achieve your personal goals. That's all we're going to be discussing here today on Drug Talk uh, with the Torvastatin. As always, this site or channel is for information purposes only. I can't say enough how much I appreciate everybody stopping by and checking out my videos. It really means a lot to me. So we'll see you guys again either tomorrow or maybe Wednesday. All right, see you later. Subscribe below. And if you'd like to follow me on social media, I'm on Twitter at Talk About Drugs. Instagram at GSOS24, and Facebook at Garrett Campbell. We recently launched a Drug Talk business page on Facebook as well.